So here we have it, loading up. So that's it, just connecting to the sensor. And no doubt, it will complain that I'm already talking myself to death at over 1,000 parts per million. Not very good. Hello there, my name's Jude Pullen and I'm a creative technologist and I've been working on an air quality project and so I thought I'd do this using Internet of Things to basically take some sensors inside my room or indeed, you know, collecting data from anywhere else. And so currently I'm on a journey uh, to try and develop not just a little animatronic bird for the fun of it, but also to sort of understand the broader category of air quality. One of the things I love about this is that, of course, the Canary is an Internet of Things device running on a small um, Arduino here. And even though it can use data from particulate CO2 and VOC from these sensors sequentially, you could actually connect it to any number of things you want. So this could also alert you towards high pollen counts for the day, or indeed it could alert you uh, to wildfires and whether there's gonna be a lot of uh, smoke coming your way, depending on what the Met Office predicts. So again, these things called APIs connect very, very well with this little canary. The choice really is yours. This is the beauty of the whole Internet of Things movement. Look at all that code. So we still need to work on the servo motors. <laughs> Shall I try and kill it then? I'll breathe on it. It's a bit stuffy in here. Would someone open a window, please? All right, giving it a bit of breath. I think I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> oh, there you go. Spark. But it sounds brilliant. <laughs> Better. So today has been a great day of uh, working with Pete Milne here on getting the code uh, from this canary, working with the sensor unit, which is just there. And safe to say, uh, nothing works first time. Um, all of those little user experience, user interface stuff, uh, we've got to work out. It takes a little time, because obviously you wouldn't want it going off all the time. It's a bit stuffy in here. <laughs> so you could use the same base mechanism here. It's a bit stuffy in here. But you could put a dinosaur, a tree, uh, an elephant, and using exactly the same electronics on the inside. Oh, blimey! Open a window or I'm going to pass out! Looking back over this project, I love the fact that it started off as CO2 and being very much about uh, starving my brain of oxygen in this small room whilst keeping all the windows and doors shut and realizing how incredibly unhealthy that was. Spark. But on a more serious level, when I've researched this, I realized that countries like Spain have actually been using very similar CO2 sensors placed in restaurants and other public places as a proxy to mitigate the risk of uh, coronavirus. Phew, that's better. So I love the fact that this harks back to the old fashioned uh, use of automata, but gives it a fresh twist as well. So I really can't wait to see what other people make with this. So what I love about this project being open source and available to as many people as possible is that when we've given this brief to other people around the world is they've approached it in completely radically different ways. And this is the really exciting thing about diversity is that people have come up with ideas which are not just unique and personal to them, but also the context and environment that they're innovating in as well. When Jud told me about this uh, air sensor project, um, I actually thought about Oh, we use it, we started using it, me and my wife at home, because she had asthma. And it's not uncommon for big cities to have poor air quality, but it's especially bad in Lagos State and is indicative of the larger problems in the country. As someone who lives in a heavily polluted city and has a sensitivity to poor air quality, 
I was revved up by the opportunity to learn more about the science of air quality sensors. We all know that art is a super powerful communication tool and data is super powerful too. So what happens when you combine them? Um, I would love to do this project and learn more about coding in a more um, mm, general form slash professional form slash more useful form. What I'm proposing is nothing less than the smartest bedroom window in the world. So for my project, I decided to explore how indoor spaces can react to the air quality inside of them. People would be able to experience better air quality, allowing them to think a lot clearer and to be a lot safer. The interactive air quality map. Statement necklace composed from a custom LED matrix that reads the real-time air quality data from a sensor located on the wear. And I've been working on this prototype for my project called Breathe Better Bear. I want to create the breathing dress, which is a garment that tells the story of the long-term health of the lungs. The sensor detects the carbon monoxide in the air, the glacier going to start to melt. It would help highlight um, how the behaviors um, behind the wheels are and help us hopefully to reduce in the emissions we put out there. So it's art about air quality that has a direct impact on air quality, which is pretty cool. And this is what's so great about this project is that now it really becomes a global thing of people engaging and bringing their art, science, technology and culture to the project as well. So it's operating both at the individual level of what it means to that person, but also has the potential to have global impact and reach all sorts of different people. And so this really is a melting pot. So I truly can't wait to see how people are gonna make this their own and where it'll go to next.